it's rough. All right, well, good morning. Good morning. Thank you, those in person and those joining online who have been patient. We've been having some technical issues here at Church of the Resurrections, but we're hopeful that they've been resolved. But if, the, if there are a few issues that pop up, uh, just stay with us, and uh, there will be a recorded version of the service as well posted later on YouTube that you can consult if uh, we lose you for any reason. The Internet's been a little particular with us today, but hopefully that will, uh, that will hold up. A few announcements as our service comes underway, but first I'm going to invite uh, Mary Martin to come up and share a little update with PWRDF. Hello. I'm your representative for PWRDF, and we did a walkathon for Ride for Refuge. The money that we raised goes towards the solar suitcases um, that we are doing for Mamzizu, um, where the use the solar suitcases that contain a solar panel. They have a Doppler, they have the battery chargers, they have um, bands with lights on them so that they are able to deliver children at night safely and help. So that is what it went towards. We had a great day. It was um, great to walk outside. Um, down at Pier 4, we had people join us and we had a couple from the diocese ourselves and uh, community living came out. So in a lot of cases, it was a nice, fun, interacting community event that was fun. And thank you all for supporting. If you still want to donate, I'm closing it off today, tomorrow, and you can see me after the service or you can go online. Thank you. For those of us who are here in person, a few reminders as to our protocols as we begin our worship today. Uh, we do ask that you uh, do keep your mask on through the duration of the service. The few exceptions will be people who have, at the time when they have a speaking part, they can remove their mask uh, at that time. Uh, we will be giving special directions at communion as to how to receive, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we are, at this time, still asking people to refrain from congregational singing. We do have our uh, choir here that uh, will lead us in music and worship, which we are very grateful for. Uh, but in the meantime, the rest of us will try to hum along uh, as best we can, but also to reflect on the words. I think some of the Thanksgiving hymns that we have and that we sing are some of the best in the hymnal. I may be biased, but I just love the Thanksgiving music, so I know you'll be blessed uh, by that today. Uh, I think those are all the protocols <laughs> that I need to remind you of. Um, like I said, we'll give more directions at the time of communion. And, oh, at the, at the conclusion of the service, uh, we are uh, encouraging folks uh, to make their way out of the, of the church building fairly promptly uh, and maintaining your social distance while you do. Uh, it is a beautiful day out there, so I will greet you outside, and uh, you can have some conversations in the parking lot. Uh, but it is one of the things we've been asked as well to do from the diocese is to encourage people to, uh, to move on uh, uh, promptly following the conclusion of our service. Well, as we begin our worship today, we want to acknowledge for a moment this land on which we gather, as being the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe peoples. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties and directly adjacent to Haldimand Treaty territory. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. Let us stand together for our opening hymn.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Creator of the fruitful earth, you made us stewards of all things. Give us grateful hearts for all your goodness and steadfast wills to use your bounty well that the whole human family today and in generations to come may with us give thanks for the riches of your creation. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of one to whom we must render an account. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Holy Word, Holy Wisdom. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Stand as you're able for the gospel reading. Hear the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these things since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. 
And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easy, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. <clears throat> Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and follow you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house, or brother, or sister, or mother, or father, or children, or fields, for my sake and for the sake of the good news. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mother and children, and fields and persecution, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Let us pray. Giver of every good gift, flood our hearts with gratitude for your many graces. Make us mindful of your presence here with us and present in the proclamation of your word. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this past week there was a little incident on a local farm. There was the head turkey turned to his second in command and said, I have a feeling something's going down. The farmer just unfriended me on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook and Thanksgiving humor given. <laughs> well, I do want to take a moment to express a hearty happy Thanksgiving to all of you uh, here and, uh, and watching at home. I do hope that your weekend is filled with good food and good company and that everyone stays safe. <clears throat> We call today Harvest Thanksgiving in the church. For millennia, we have regarded this as being a truly a sacred day. It's not just a civic holiday, but it is truly a holy day. For gratitude has long been identified in the Christian tradition as being key, paramount, essential to a healthy spiritual life. For through gratitude, God grants us vision to see God at work in the world and in our lives. Gratitude inoculates us from the trappings of wealth and the illusion that we are in control. The rich young man in our story today, it's been said that it wasn't that he had money, but that his money had him. By all accounts, he was a good person. We are not given any reason to believe that he wasn't a good person, faithful in keeping the commandments of God. He probably even used his wealth to help others, as people in his position were often uh, benefactors to others. But Christ could see that he was bound by his wealth and the status and privileges it granted. And this prevented him from being able to see 
the boundless grace God was prepared to grant him. He encountered God in the flesh, think about it, face to face with Jesus. But he left that encounter sad, defeated, focusing on what he was asked to give up, ignorant to what he could have received. For Jesus promised blessing, a bigger family than he could imagine, resources shared by others in the family so that no one ever went without. And we get a great picture of this in the Acts of the Apostles, of what the, how the early church lived, sharing with one another, meeting with one another, a large family. He could have had a life of meaning and fullness, of challenge and triumph, of healings and miracles, and seeing the bound set free. It was a life he couldn't imagine, for he was too attached to what he'd always known. We don't have to be rich to be blind to the graces all around us. It's so easy to get caught up in cycles of struggle and challenge. These last few years have been grueling and have taken a toll on all of us in ways we're only beginning to understand. And many of us have been undergoing other personal challenges, including grief, that's been amplified by the effects of the pandemic. And so for us, Thanksgiving might be a difficult or challenging holiday because we're being asked to be grateful. We're being reminded of the importance of gratitude. And that might be hard to see when so much around us seems to be falling apart. But I'd like to suggest today that maybe that's the point. Maybe God is calling us to bless and praise God in the middle of the storm. Maybe this is the way that it's always been from times of ancient scripture to now. When God's people are being asked to take our focus off both our security and our scarcity. To behold the one who knows us who shaped us while we were in our mother's womb? What if instead of keeping score of the things we've been hurt or wronged by, or the things we've lost, we lean into the everlasting arms of the one who knows every hair on our heads? Technology willing, we're going to hear a song this morning that tells such a story. It is a story born in dark times of grasping, of looking for God. It's a story of the, from the pandemic. It's a story of faith that looks back and sees the way God was at work in the past and testifies that God is still working in the now. Of how God is our portion when there wasn't enough. It's a story of crossing seas and parting waters and waves that were walked. It is a song that proclaims that God will not fail. And it is a song soaked in gratitude for the grace of God. It's called The Story I'll Tell. It's a song that was shared with me by a friend this week, and it's moved me every time I've heard it to the point that I want to share it with you this morning. So let's listen and see if this song might echo our own. The 
What's the story that you'll tell this weekend? I'd encourage you to find your song of thanksgiving. Maybe write a poem, paint a landscape, make a psalm from scripture your own, a part of your own story, and practice naming the graces you are thankful for each and every day. And sing hallelujah to the rock of ages. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray to God, our Father, and Lord of the harvest, saying, God of love, hear our prayer. Generous God, at this harvest time, we thank you for all the good things you have given us. As we thank you for our food, we remember all those who do not have enough, for even one proper meal each day. Lord, bless all those who suffer because of the greed of others. God of love. Yeah. Pray for the homeless and all those who depend on the charity of others. We pray for the work of all homeless shelters we pray for St. Matthew's house, neighbor to neighbor, and all those agencies that help in need of local food banks, providing food for those in need. Help us to share the harvest of the world more fairly so everyone can be fed and there will be no more starvation. God of love, Amen. at this time, we thank you for the hard work of all those who grow, protect, prepare our food, for the shopkeepers, the transport delivery drivers, the processors and farmers. Bless all those, Lord who do not earn a fair day's pay for their labor, both at home and in other countries. God of love. Yeah. At this harvest time, we thank you for the world we see around us, for the flowers, the trees, animals. Bless all those who care for them. Bless our church, our priests, Margaret, Elizabeth, Stephen, and Leon. In the Niagara Diocese, we pray for our Bishop Susan Bell. At St. Paul's West Hill, we pray for our Reverend Canon DeForest and the Reverend Dr. Michael Knowles and the people of that parish. In our parish, we pray for Wilbur and Millicent Wilshire, Michael and Pam Woods, Stan and Barbara Voitas, and their families. We pray with thanksgiving for all those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries in the coming week. Simon Swain, Peter Zota, and a belated happy anniversary to Diane Hewitt and Eric Bertrand. May God bless them as they celebrate and in the year ahead. God of love. Yeah. At this harvest time, we ask your blessings on our families, friends, and neighbors. <coughs> and on those who are sick, and so we pray for Marilyn, 
H. Frank, Fred, John and Sylvia, Norma, Dolores, Hazel, Molly, Gloria, Charlotte, Elsie, Pam, Faye, Joan, David, Janet, Phyllis, Diane R., Mabel, Wayne, Gary, Norma, Harry, Steve, Karen, Marlene, the Kinch family, Wyatt, Doreen, Tim, John, Lal, and Martin, Felipe, and Emma S. God of love, Lord, help us to recognize the interdependence of all life and the importance of just relations and community. And help us become good stewards of all you continue to give us. God of love. Amen. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand together. The peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you. Let us take a few moments to share in a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. Peace. We'll remain standing for our offertory hymn. <clears throat> The heaven and earth are yours, yet you have given us dominion over all things. Receive the symbols of our labor and love, which we offer you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, it is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. praise. Eternal God, source of all being, we give you thanks and praise for your faithful love. You call us into friendship with you and one another to be your holy people, a sign of your presence in the world. When those we trust betray us, unfailingly you remain with us. When we injure others, you confront us in your love and call us to the paths of righteousness. You stand with the weak 
and those broken and alone, whom you have always welcomed home, making the first last and the last first. Therefore, we raise our voices with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Holy One. When Hagar was driven into the wilderness, you followed her and gave her hope. When Joseph was sold into bondage, you turned malice to your people's good. When you called Israel out of slavery, you brought them through the wilderness into the promised land. When your people were taken into exile, you wept with them by the river of Babylon and carried them home. Restore Restore us, us, O God. God. Let Let your your face shine. shine. At the right time, you sent your anointed one to stand with the poor, the outcast, and the oppressed. Jesus touched lepers and the sick and healed them. He accepted water from a woman of Samaria and offered her the water of new life. Christ knew the desolation of the cross and opened the way for all humanity into the redemption of your reconciling love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread. He gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, Do this for the remembrance of me. Loving and Holy One, recalling Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you these gifts, longing for the bread of tomorrow and the wine of the age to come. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Pour out your spirit on these gifts, that through them you may sustain us in our hunger for your peace. We hold before you all whose lives are marked by suffering, our sisters and brothers. When we are broken and cast aside, embrace us in your love. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory are yours, O source of all life, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for you, the holy and beloved people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Just a brief word of instruction as to how we'll receive today. In a few moments, I'll administer uh, the bread to to our choir and musicians. Uh, Our sides people will then direct you towards the center aisle. Uh, You'll notice there are markers to help remind you of keeping uh, the social distance. There is uh, hand sanitizer on the table. would encourage you to make use of as well. And I'll be standing uh, at the front of the platform to administer the bread. When you take the bread, uh, we do recommend that you bring it back to your pew. And once seated in your pew, you can lift your mask to receive the bread. We just find that's the simplest way in which to do so. So please do uh, take advantage of that.
Please stand with me as you are able. God of our hope, in this Eucharist we find the source of all your blessings. Nourished in these holy mysteries, may we, with our lives, give you continual thanks and praise. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the God of all grace, who called you to eternal glory in Christ Jesus, restore, establish, and strengthen you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Friends in Christ, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.